Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Now, before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription really helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right, today I'm doing the third of three wines from Corvetso. Today's wine is a Pinot Grigio from them. This wine was provided to me for free. I have free reign to say and review the wine in any way I see fit. All right, so two weeks, uh, two weeks ago, I gave you a detailed background of the winery. If you missed that, feel free to watch that episode at your leisure. Today, I'll give you a summary version. So, nestled in the village of Sassalto near the town of Treviso, they are between the Veneto and the Dolomite Mountains. The winery has been around since 1960, started by the grandparents of the current owner, Giovanni Corvezzo. He likes to refer to himself as the happy farmer. Now, Giovanni moved from a sustainable approach to organics in 2010, with certification coming in 2017. They began exploring becoming biodynamic in 2020. They have a total of 380 acres planted to Glera and Pinot Grigio, and their website states that they are the number one organic Prosecco winery in Italy. They may plant other grapes, but I didn't see any listed. Essentially, Giovanni, uh, again, the happy farmer, um, it seems to be doing everything right with organics, recycling, renewable energy, etc. Okay, so let's see the stats for this wine. The 2020 Corvetto Pinot Grigio suggested retail price is $13. It's in the Pinot Grigio della Venezia DOC. 100% Pinot Grigio. It uses the Silva's training system. It's harvested mechanically. Its vinification is soft, cold crushing and pressing. It's aged in 95% concrete tank and 5% oak barrel. Now, I'm going to guess that the, the oak is large old barrels. And the ABV is 12%. All right, so let's get into this wine. All right. Good old screw cap. Bang. Where's my Corvin? Over here hanging out with all the little trashy bits. Okie dokie smoky. If I didn't mention anything in either of the prior two videos, um, you may have, I may have been referring to a top down look. Um, I, was playing around with that. I even bought a nice little um, a clamp to put my iPhone 10 in there. And lo and behold, trying to make sure I didn't run out of battery, I put it in the battery case, but the battery case does not allow for heat to dissipate and the phone overheated and stopped recording. Now I think I know why for my documentary I worked on uh, a few months ago, why that phone stopped recording during the second panel of interviews I did. It was we recorded for like two minutes and it would stop because it overheated, but I, I didn't feel it. I didn't feel how hot it was. So mental note, I can't do that with that, with really the phones in general. All right. Though I've done the, I've done this phone. I've, I've put in a battery case and it seemed fine for a long periods of time. All right. That's more than you really needed to know. Let's <laughs> just look at the wine. Um, okay, I know you don't have a top down, but you know, it's a lighter straw color as it should be. It's got some good aromatics. It's actually high, kind of highly, not highly, but I call it medium plus aromatics. It's very youthful as it should be. So I get more of a fresher green apple. So like the Prosecco had that green apple candy thing going on. This is more of a, a, a um, fresher green apple. Also a little bit of pear. Like really fresh, like like just just picked right. I want to say this almost like an like a cherry blossom, an orange blossom. It was like a white flower type of thing. 
it does have a touch of like sweetness on on the nose. And I feel like there's a little bit of bitterness, like a little bit of apple skin going on there. Let's, let's check it out. It tastes good. It's just really solid. Um, you know, Pinot Grigio within the industry, we like to kind of rag on it a little bit because there's so much Pinot Grigio that's like super neutral and it's great for like, you know, when it's 100 degrees out, like it's been for like 40 days in Texas, um, instead of a flood for 40 days and 40 nights, we have like a heat wave. Anyway, um, this has a little more complexity to it. This has, you know, there's, it's actually character and it, it's something different. Now I'm not saying that all Pinot Grigio will have this type of, um, uh, neutrality, but it's it's a characteristic it's known for. But yet when you go to France and you have Pinot Gris, there tends to be more going on to it. And it's the same grape. So yeah, we got that green apple, a little tangerine orange, um, white flowers. There's a touch of bitterness going on here. There's a little bit of peanut shell. That's what I was getting. There's a little peanut shell, which sometimes happens. You get like this like peanut shell or almond skin type of thing. Yeah, it's good. It's 13 bucks, and that's really good. I mean, I've had I've had Pinot Grigios in this price range that were like, eh, they're okay. Like, they're porch pounders, pool, you know, pool wines. This one has a little more, this one has a little more complexity, a little more character to it. There's a little bit of bitterness to it, too. I think, I mean, there might be some people that kind of get put off by it because what they want Pinot Grigio to be. I think this is for someone that wants more complexity in the Pinot Grigio. And I'm not saying this is super complex. It's not. It just has a little bit more. It has a little more character to it than just like your standard old $10 to $13 super easy to drink and refreshing Pinot Grigio. Mm. Yeah. If you can find this, I think you should buy it. Cool, man. All right. That's going to do it for today's show. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and then tell your friends and we'll see you next time.